In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform a one-way analysis of variance, or one-way ANOVA, by using Microsoft Excel. This includes performing the test and analysing the results. As always, I would really appreciate it if you would kindly drop a like on this video if you find it useful. This really does help support and grow the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. So let's get into Excel and get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365 Pro Plus. I currently have some example data already entered, so I'll briefly discuss these. Here I have data from three different male groups for their performance on the vertical jump test. Each different group is in a different column. Then each cell represents a different participant's height that they jumped recorded in centimeters. And as you can see, I have 15 participants in each group. So that's an overview of my data. What I want to do now is to perform a one-way ANOVA to determine if there is a significant difference between the average height measures of my three groups. To be able to perform the one-way ANOVA test easily in Excel, it's best to install or activate the Analysis Tool Pack. This is an add-on created by Microsoft to provide data analysis tools for statistical analyses. To install the Tool Pack, go to File, Options, then click on Add-ins. At the bottom, you want to manage the Excel add-ins and click the Go button. Then ensure that you tick the Analysis Toolpack add-in and click OK. Now, when you click on the Data ribbon at the top, you should see a Data Analysis button in a subsection called Analyze. Now we are ready to perform the one-way ANOVA. To do this, click on the Data Analysis button, then select ANOVA Single Factor and click OK. The first thing I need to do is select the Input Range. This is essentially the data we want to run in the analysis. So I will highlight all of my data. You can highlight the labels in the first row if you want. Next, I need to select how my data are grouped. Because each group's data is in a separate column, this is grouped by columns. So I'll select this option. If your data was entered in rows instead of columns, you could select the rows option. If you highlighted the labels in your first row when selecting the input range, then tick this option here. Since I highlighted my labels, I will click this. The next option is to specify your alpha level. This is essentially your significance threshold. Usually this is set at 0.05, meaning that if the p-value was less than or equal to 0.05, you would reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. I will keep this set at 0.05 for this example. Finally, we need to select our output options. There are three options. The output range lets you highlight a region within the sheet where you want the results to be entered. The second option is to have the results placed on a new worksheet and you can give that sheet a name. The last option is to have the results placed in a completely separate Excel file. I'll select the second option and call the new sheet results. Now I'll click OK to run the test. So you should see a new sheet has been created. In this case, it is called results. I'll now interpret the one way ANOVA results given by Excel. In the first table, this presents a summary of the data in the analysis. Basically, there is the count, which is the number of data points in each group. In this case, there were 15 counts or participants in each group. The sum is just the total value if we were to add up all of the values in each group. Next, there is the average value in each group. And the last column, we have the variance. The variance is the average of the squared differences from the mean. It is simply a measurement of the spread between the numbers in the data set. So that's a look at the summary table. Let me now focus on the ANOVA results table underneath. The results here are split into three rows. The first row describes the results when the between groups is classed as the source of variation. The second row describes the results when the source of variation is within groups. And finally, the last row is just the total. Simply, it is just the sum of the SS and DF for the first two rows. But what does SS and the other columns represent? The SS refers to the sum of squares. The sum of squares between groups quantifies the variability between the groups of interest. Underneath is the sum of squares within groups, and this quantifies the variability within the groups of interest. Next, we have the DF, which stands for degrees of freedom. This is calculated slightly differently for the two rows. To determine the degrees of freedom between groups, you simply subtract one from the number of groups in the analysis. And since I have three groups, one subtracted from three is two. To determine the degrees of freedom within the groups, you subtract the number of groups in the analysis 
from the total number of observations. So in total, I have 45 participants, 15 in each group. So to calculate the degrees of freedom within the groups, I subtract three, which is the number of groups from 45. Next, we have MS. MS refers to the mean square. You can think of it as an average variation between the groups or within the groups, depending on the row you are looking at. To calculate the mean square, you simply divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom. So if we take the between groups, the mean square is 40.13 divided by 2, which is 20.07 if I round up. The F statistic is the test statistic used in the one way and over test. It is calculated as the ratio of the mean square between the groups to the mean square within the groups. The two degrees of freedom values, along with the alpha level, are used to work out the F critical value for the test. This is easily calculated by Excel, or you can do this manually by looking up an F critical value table. The F statistic is then compared with the F critical value. If the F statistic is greater than the F critical value, then we conclude that the test is significant, and vice versa. The p-value for the hypothesis test is also calculated. My p-value here is 0 0.19557. By the way, if you're not sure what a p-value is, then I recommend that you watch my previous tutorial on what is a p-value. In terms of hypotheses, let's say my null hypothesis was there is no difference between the means of my three groups. And let's say my alternative hypothesis was there is a difference between the means of my three groups. So if you remember previously, we selected the alpha level of 0.05 for our test. This means that when P is less than or equal to 0.05, we will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Or when P is greater than 0.05, we will accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis. So since my p-value is greater than my alpha level of 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, there is no difference between the means of my three groups. In other words, each group on average performed more or less the same on the vertical jump test. Now if your results were significant, i.e. the p-value was less than or equal to 0.05, then the one-way ANOVA test can only tell you that there is a difference between the groups. It's very important that you understand that the test will not tell you where these differences lie. So you will not know which specific group is different from the rest. To investigate this further, you will need to perform a post hoc test. There are many types of post hoc tests available, such as Tukey, Bonferroni, and Holmes's. I'll discuss these in more detail and show you how to perform these in Excel in future video tutorials. And that brings me swiftly on to the end of this tutorial. In this video, you have learned how to perform a one-way ANOVA test in Microsoft Excel, and you also know how to interpret the results. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.